Welcome back to Refit and Sale. My name's George Issa, the Silent Boat Butler. This is a Contessa 32 from the mid-70s that's with me for a fairly extensive refit. This is the continuing adventures of Project Lottie. As you can see, it is a beautiful sunny day here on the River Hamble. I'm going to be looking at the windows today. The windows all need to come out. They are pretty knackered and I've got some brand new ones sitting in a workshop waiting to go in. So come with me on the journey and I'll show you how to do it. So I'm pretty sure that the windows on this boat are original, um, whether they've been in and out within that time period, I can't say for sure. It's likely that they have. So if they have, I'm hoping they haven't been glued back in with an adhesive sealant because that makes their removal considerably more difficult than it would be if they are um, kind of on the original sealants, which is probably degraded to the point where they'll almost fall out once I remove the fixings. Um, uh, what I need to do, uh, there's eight windows in total, what I need to do is remove the interscrew, undo them all, and then prise those old windows away from the coach roof sides. I can then clean up the surface, I'll be filling all the holes, um, that's internally and externally because there's a liner, uh, like a headlining on the inside of the boat as well, so I'll be filling those holes as well, and then I can come back in and drill for the new hole spacing for all the new windows and next week when I've got a helper I can put them back in again. Here's a little look at the windows as they stand. That's the galley one. There's the saloon window it's looking kind of crusty and there's a forward window and the very most forward window. So they're looking pretty tired externally. I'll show you what they look like on the inside. Here you go, inside the boat you can see they are not in particularly great shape. This is the one above the nav station. The uh, outer ring there is kind of detached. Same deal here on the starboard side. Looking pretty crusty. Oh, a drip of water there because it rained this morning and um, yeah they are just, um, they've had it. The sealant between the glass and the frame is all kind of oozing out and uh, the seal between the frame and the boat itself I think has failed because quite a few of them are leaking. So it's time to put them in the bin. There we go, there's the other side. Looking pretty nasty. So you can see around the edge of these windows you've got these little knobbly bits these are called barrel nuts or interscrews. So um, there's a machine screw that comes in from the outside that goes into the internal thread of these little nubbins. So um, what I need to do externally is unscrew all the machine screws that go into these barrel nuts. Hopefully they'll all come out without the barrel nuts spinning. Um, I suspect that these are suitably old and corroded that they won't move so the barrel nuts should stay in place uh, and then I can just prise hopefully the window off the boat without damaging anything. Because the sun is on this side I thought I would start with this window which is starboard side uh, just above the chart table so let's see how many of these screws are going to come out. Oh, okay, now I can guarantee there's going to be one that doesn't want to. Now, because I am a Contessa bore, 
I can tell that this window has never been out and this is I can never remember the year of this boat but something like 1975-1976 built boat so it's nearly 50 years this window's been in original sealant not really a surprise that it's leaking um, but the good news is that means it should come out fairly easily because the problems I have sometimes is windows have come out and either been resealed or replaced um, put back in on Sikaflex or some other very adhesive um, uh, sealant and that makes them very very difficult to get out because they are so well adhered I've had the gel coat pull off the boat rather than the window release from the gel coat so um, and that just creates a whole load more work because you've got to do a load of repairs before you can put your new windows in. I have just removed the inner ring in case you're wondering. Just get that in there. Ta da! No wonder that didn't undo because the barrel nut is seized to it but the end broke off so um, it was fooked. Here we go, I've got most of the sealant cleaned off around here. It will get more of a clean in a bit, but I want to start filling all these holes. Uh, and I can't fill them without cleaning out the holes. So the quickest and easiest way of doing that is to simply get my electric drill and I've got a six and a half in there, which is just around or slightly larger than the size of the original holes. And I'm just gonna whiz through them all. And giving me nice clean fiberglass to uh, bond to when I put some filler in there. Not uncommon to find that the holes are going through kind of almost open space on these boats because they made the cutouts slightly too large quite often in the factory. So when I will fill that I'm actually going to end up building some material up there which I'll then sand back so um, the new hole will go through somewhere around there and I'd quite like it to go through solid material because um, there wasn't exactly an awful lot of overlap on that bit of the window there um, hopefully you can see that the light is so bright out here it's um, slightly overexposing but hopefully you can see that go. I think that's them all done. I just need to hoover up. The difficulty of making these videos sometimes is what I think is fairly mundane is perhaps new to a lot of viewers. Now these windows are not specific to a Contessa. There's an awful lot of boats that use this type of window. So Westerly Yachts is another big old manufacturer of boats in the UK and they used a very similar type of window as did lots of other boat builders through the 70s 80s and into the 90s it was only really through the 90s that people started moving to kind of uh, a different style of window which has fixings that just go from the inside to the outside and there's no screws coming through from the outside and manufacturers like Lumar and Gibo and many others produce those windows and so man boat manufacturers decided to go down that route rather than having this sort of interscrew frame with a inner ring arrangement but actually it's nice to keep these windows in the boats um, as kind of factory um, originals because I like to think of these boats, particularly the Contessas, as kind of classic boats um, rather than sort of just old boats. And there is something to be said for keeping them in the style in which they were originally built with some modernization, of course, but um, there's something about the charm of having the boat in its sort of factory original condition.
here's how the inside is looking. So I've cleaned up most of the sealant. There was kind of lumps of sealant around the inside here. Most of it kind of just flaked off pretty easily when I ran a scraper or a screwdriver over it. You can see my neighbour there, another Contessa, waiting for me to have some time. And uh, I've drilled all these holes out now, as you've just seen. So I'm going to mix up some goo and do a quick fill on all those holes from the outside. Now, it's not super critical that I fill the inside holes, but I quite often do, um, just as a matter of course. So I'm going to um, get cracking on that. Here's that window now with all its fixing holes filled. Well, I say all. Just before pressing the record button, I noticed I missed that one. So I've got to go mix up some more goo because it's all gone off now. Um, but you can see what I've tried to do. I ended up actually opening up the holes very slightly with a little countersink tool just to create a bit more surface area for the filler to stick to. So this is just um, the same polyester kind of semi-structural filler that I use for lots of different jobs around the boat. And um, it's great for just filling holes where you want a reasonably good bond, but you also want something that you can kind of sand and grind and fix to at a later date. So it does the job very nicely. Right, I'm going to go and mix up a bit more goo, stick it in the hole and then go and have a cup of tea. Same deal here on the inside. So I filled all the holes, but what I have tried to do as I've been going around, I'll just get my stick and show you, is when I put the filler in there, I then rub some filler on the inside because I don't necessarily want to stick the two skins together um, because I don't want to make that gap any larger than necessary. So I still want to be able to push the headliner in against the coach roof side. So I will come back in with a little bit of sandpaper when this is cured and just clean up any excess filler in the gap so that I can squeeze the gap closed again and not have any issues with um, the gap not closing, which would mean longer screws and more faff when it comes to fitting them. But hey, I'm not complaining about the weather because it is gorgeous. Look at that. It is very nearly shorts and t-shirt weather. The problem with wearing shorts when you're working on a boat is if I spend a lot of time on my knees, I don't have a lot of protection on them, so I need to get some knee pads maybe. Here's that window now with all the holes filled, that's all cured. Whilst I was waiting for that to cure, I actually took that window out as well and that one's had all its whole gooed as well. So that one just needs to go off and this one is ready for sanding. So I'm just gonna come in with a little block of wood and some sandpaper and just knock all these little bits back inside and out. I might end up having to get my oscillating tool in here because um, the material that's kind of squidged in there, you can see, it's um, gonna stop that from pulling together flat. So, um, but that's fine, that's easily solved. Uh, and that's partly why I've got all those clamps on that one up there. You see, it's to, um, you either want to glue the two skins together so that they're nice and close together, or you want to not glue the two skins together and make sure that when the window is put in, it will all clamp up kind of like that. So um, that is the plan. Either option is absolutely fine. Right, I'm going to go get a bit of sandpaper, stick some gloves on and do some sanding. Well, there we go. I have finished all the sanding on the inside. I've been in with my little um, grinding attachment on my oscillating tool to make sure this all kind of pushes in. There isn't anything in there that will stop that coming together when I put the window back in. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do lastly before I say this one is kind of ready for drilling for the new window is I'm going to go round here 
both inside and outside with some 1200 grit wet and dry paper just to sand this back and kind of clean this up and make it look really really nice so 1200 is almost the last step before compounding some gel coat if you're refinishing it so um, I may if I go to the workshop also go and get a little bit of um, uh, rubbing compound and uh, just make that bit around the window look really nice so that when it comes to polishing the rest of the boat I don't need to worry about getting too close into the window itself which will be brand new with my big polishing mop because I don't want to damage the new window so um, that seems like a, a sensible thing to do as part of the process. What's also fun is a little thing up here which is just out of shot I'll show you that now. When the boat first arrived here there was loads of bits and bobs stickers and things all over this kind of bulkhead but we've removed most of them but left two. This one here we have left the cars it is the original IOR certificate which would have had writing on it you can just about make out some of the writing it's the original measurement certificate for the boat when it was built so that it could go racing and uh, I thought that would be a nice bit of history to keep on the boat the other sticker that's being kept is this vital actions sticker you see that with uh, black and gold writing it's very 1970s maybe early 80s maybe it was bought from a chandlery maybe it came with a magazine I wouldn't like to say but it's the sort of thing that you'd probably get with yachting monthly or something like that if you have a subscription um, I like that because it's kind of in keeping with the boat maybe the owner will disagree and we'll remove it but um, I really hope that we can keep this thing here because that's pretty cool I like to see that got to remember these are classic boats I think now and uh, retaining some bits of history like that even though it looks slightly scruffy perhaps to the average person I think it's nice to keep it There's the window opening, all wet sanded and ready for me to bring the new window down to the boat, stick it in the hole and then start drilling holes and what have you to refit it. Now I would have done that but I forgot to pick up the windows when I was in my workshop earlier, silly me. So I'm going to cover up the hole there and the next one up there temporarily with big wide tape like this, big PVC tape stuff. Um, it's really useful for sealing up windows so I'm going to do those two because there's some big black clouds kind of over there and then I will carry on with the next one and if it starts raining well it starts raining and I'll just have to deal with it. It's now the next day but this is how I left the boat yesterday you can see all the windows have disappeared they're all taped up with big thick white tape so the starboard side was completely finished and today I've been getting on with the port side and as you can see down the port side here, there's the two forward windows, they're all ready. There's the saloon window and there is the galley window. They have all been removed, cleaned, filled and kind of then sanded back. And then I've wet sanded all around the outside so we have a nice clean gel coat. So the next thing is to look at some windows. And through the magic of editing, here are those brand new windows. So I've just brought one of the old scruffy ones down. So that's one that has just been removed. And there is its shiny new replacement. Whenever I get new windows, the first thing I do is get some tape and mark them all up. So they are all designated a hole. So in the case of this one, that is Port Saloon and uh, it says it on all three pieces. So we've got the inner rings here and the main part of the frame. Now I always have the tape to the top because that's easy to remember. Um, 
you can do as you wish, but um, I always mark them up because these are handmade by human beings. And so um, the holes on this one will not be in exactly the same position as its equivalent number for the starboard side. So they must be marked up so that when you use this as a drill guide and drill all the holes, the right window ends up going in the right hole. Otherwise you end up getting very, very frustrated trying to work out why you've drilled the holes in the wrong places. So um, that's always the very first thing I do. Uh, then I'll offer the window up to the hole and use it, as I said, like a drill guide and run through. I think these are M4 fixings, so I normally start them off with a four mil drill and then go around with a four and a half just to have a little bit of clearance on the hole. Uh, and then from the inside, I come into all these holes on the inside and I need to open them up. Now, what I do normally is open them up either with a much larger drill, which will fit the interscrew or the barrel nut in it, or what's sometimes easier, and I'm looking around because I can't see it, what's sometimes easier if I get my little um, Dremel, which isn't a Dremel, uh, and come in and just open it up and make a little circle in the um, headlining, then that's um, giving me the recess that I need to be able to push the interscrew in through the hole. So what I've got to do on these inner rings is to fit the little barrel nuts and if I was organized I would have opened up the box which is down there and shown you what they look like. So here are what the barrel nuts look like if the camera will focus on that and it has a little thread on the inside. Now these have knurled sides so what I do is I get my little barrel nut and sometimes they'll push through, sometimes they just need tapping in and they locate in these holes. So the holes in the inner rings are drilled to just be a fraction under size and it allows you to push these things and they locate and with the knurling, in theory, they don't turn or they don't turn very much or very easily. So um, there is a little bit of variation in the size of the holes, but generally they are quite a snug fit when you push them in, but you can see they stick out a little bit the other side. Now you can get these in two sizes. I always go for the short ones rather than the long ones because the um, thickness of the uh, deck is a little bit variable as you go around the boat. Some areas it's thicker than others. So I tend to go for all thin, uh, all short ones, but I have some long ones as well. So I can swap them out if I need to when it comes to fitting the window. But as you can see, it sticks out a bit. So I have to open up the um, headlining a little bit to accept the barrel nut where it pokes through the inner ring and then I can stick that up there, put the window in and jobs are good. But of course I need a helper for that but what I'm doing today is getting as much ready as possible because it's lovely and sunny uh, and then I'm going to tape all the windows up once they've all been drilled and wait for my helper to come next week and uh, she's going to come and hold inner rings on the inside while I do screwing up on the outside and get all these windows fitted. The only two that I can do myself are the ones that are right up in the forward cabin because they're next to the forward hatch and I can lean in through the forward hatch and do those ones normally on my own, but um, the rest of them need two people. And I can't get this out now. <laughs> so because there's a bit of movement in the frame, I've just put a couple of little cardboard wedges in on the bottom just to raise it up slightly in the hole it's going in and uh, I've also kind of jiggling it left and right to get it as central as possible because I want to be drilling through deck not open air because it's not an absolutely perfect fit in the hole. And there goes the train going by. Right I think that's pretty good there. So uh, what I'm going to do is stick one hole in, stick one screw in, and then that will stop it from moving too far. Do one at the bottom. There we 
go. And now I can rock that around and I know its location is not going to move too much. There, that's all of them. No, it's not. I've missed that one there. Right, that's everything done with a four or a three and a half. So I'm going to lift this out now. cover my screws and then I'm going to go through all those holes with a four and a half just to give me a bit more clearance for fitting. So you can see that some of these go back through the original holes that were there or pretty close to it and others are completely different and that's why I go and fill all the old holes and then re-drill everything because then you know everything should be absolutely correct. Right now I need to open up the holes on the inside. Internally you can see all the little holes here. Some of them don't go quite through the headlining but I'm going to have to notch out the headlining ever so slightly so that it doesn't interfere with the barrel nuts or the interscrews when they go together. So I'm going to come in now with my little Dremel and just open up all of those things, all of those little holes so that uh, it will fit nicely. There we go, this one's now all done. You can see all the little holes that have been opened up on the inside. And what I've done is I've gone through the inner liner through to the um, outer skin, the coach roof side, and I've stopped there. Um, what you have to do when going through is sometimes push the liner in because it's obviously gonna move a bit when you tighten everything up. And so the hole is going to move very slightly. And so uh, those all look good. Right, I'm now going to tape this window up because this one's all ready. Move on to the next one down there and do exactly the same again. Off camera, I've been happily getting on with all the windows on the port side, so all these holes here are all prepped and most of them are drilled. I think I've still got to do that one because I'm running out of time, that's the saloon window. Um, and I have fitted the very first window because I can do the very forward ones because they're right next to the forward hatch there. And uh, I was going to record a fitting when I have an assistant next week, but it occurred to me that I may as well just have you watch me put this little one in here, which is all prepped and ready to go. I've just drilled all the holes. There's the shiny new window. And inside, if I can 
get the camera down into the boat. You can see I've done all the little recesses that need to be in there for the um, interscrews to go in. So I'm going to push the interscrews into the inner frame and uh, then take you along for the ride. I've got the inner rings here. You can tell they're the correct ones because they've got SB written on them for starboard bow. And uh, I'm just going to pop in, not those, but these little barrel nuts. If you think there's someone filming me, there isn't. The camera follows me. I have a very clever gimbal mount, which is quite nice. Apart from when it goes wrong and it starts recording something, you know, completely over there. Right, these little chaps, as I think I said earlier, but I can't remember, just push in to the um, inner rings. They often require a little bit of persuasion. And so oh, it depends how much um, tolerance they've built into the drilling of the holes. And what I quite often have to do is go and get a little socket or something like that. And I place this on top of the socket or a big nut and I just give it a little tap from on the top, which I will go and do now off camera and they will just pop straight in. There we go, interscrews are in. That is the, the bit that is on show. And what I've actually done, because I didn't show this on the camera a minute ago, was I've used slightly longer ones on the top and slightly shorter ones on the bottom. And that's because right up the front is quite a tight curve right next to the window in the headlining. And as a result, the gap that I've got to fill is much, much bigger. So um, I can achieve exactly the same thing by using some longer screws from the outside, but because I'm, I'm running a bit short on the, the longer screws, I thought, well, I've got some longer interscrews or barrel nuts. Um, I'll stick them in and that buys me probably about three or four mil of extra reach to pull the outer skin and the inner skin together using a um, kind of a standard 12 mil screw on the outside. So we'll see how this all goes. I have a selection of fixings, so I'm going to take you up on deck with these and we'll see how we go. In case you're wondering, I get these windows made for me, so I can get individuals made, but typically I buy full sets in and I normally have a set on the um, shelf ready to go if any of my customers uh, want me to send them out. Um, they are quite expensive, so um, a full set of Contessa 32 windows, so the frames, the inner rings, into screws, barrel nuts, the whole thing, not including sealant, is off the top of my head about £2,000. Slightly less than that maybe, but um, it's of that sort of um, order. So they are quite expensive things to replace, but hopefully you don't need to replace them very often. This boat is on its original set, which are coming out, which are getting on for 50 years old. So hopefully for most people, that is maybe, you know, one set and fit and forget, hopefully for the rest of the time that you own the boat. Um, unless of course you own it an extremely long time. They are an exact replica of the original windows that the boat had from the factory. If you do need a set, then uh, I can supply them to owners to fit themselves. Um, but to be honest with you, most of the time, owners bring their boats to me and I fit them uh, on their behalf, but it is certainly possible to do it yourself. As you can see, it is a beautiful sunny day. Unfortunately, the camera is looking directly into the sun. I'm right-handed, so I've kind of got to have the camera on this side of me so you can see what I'm doing. So we're just gonna have to do our best. And hopefully, if I point the camera down, you'll be able to see what's happening. So there is the hole, well, there is the window. I'm gonna start by covering it all in goo. So the sealant I'm using is non-setting. It firms up, but it never completely 100% sets. And it's kind of tacky rather than adhesive. And I like using this stuff over an adhesive sealant because it means that as and when you need to take the window off, you don't damage the window or the boat in getting it off because I did one job recently where I had to replace the windows and the windows I was taking out had been stuck on with Sikaflex and they were stuck on like crazy and I was extremely careful but I still managed to remove 
some of the gel coat off the boat when I pulled the window off, so I had to do a few little gel repairs. Mostly they were kind of hidden under the frame, so it wasn't the end of the world, but if you can see that, that is the stuff that I use, Arbormast BR. It's the butyl-based non-setting sealant that they make, as recommended by many boat window manufacturers, I believe. Um, I've been using it for years and seems to do the job. Generally speaking, they go in and they don't leak. As far as I know, they don't leak. So uh, that can now be located in the hole. I'll just gently shove that in there. Right, this is that one on the inside. Might have to move my microphone otherwise I'm going to lean on it. So, microphone going on hat, which probably looks very silly, but it will work. Right, I've got two lengths of screw here, which aren't perhaps obvious on the camera, but these ones are the long ones, they're about 16 mil. These are the short ones. Uh, no, I've got that the wrong way around. These are long ones, about 16 mil. These are the short ones, they're about 12-ish. So I'm going to go a, a long one to start with. And what I sometimes have to do is put a long one in just to get the thing attached on the inside. And then if I find that screw bottoms out in the bottom of the barrel nut, I then swap it for a shorter one once it's kind of attached. I'll wiggle that around, find the hole. There we go. Now this is the bit where you're just going to see me hanging over into the... hanging through the doodad here. Oh. just to catch on the interscrew. There we go, that's just caught. And just leave it there until I've got all the screws in, and then I'll start pulling it all in. So, that was a long one. I'm actually gonna try and put a short one in the bottom. And we'll see how that goes. So, we'll stick a bit of goo on there. may not be long enough. Or it might be, we'll see. Oh. It's definitely easier with two people. <sighs> nah, that won't quite locate, so. I'll pull that out. I'll stick a long one in there. I'll always make great efforts to contain the goo because it goes everywhere otherwise. I'll give that a little clean. I'll probably use it again in a minute. Those are short ones. Let's get a long one. Lots of lovely goo on the screw. Check the screw in the hole, I'll see if I can find it.
There we go. Straight in. Wish they were all that easy. So this is a good test of your drilling accuracy. So they all go straight in and you've drilled it nicely. If you've held the drill at an angle and you're struggling to get the thing to locate, then you haven't drilled it very accurately. Yeah, that one's in as well. Right, I'm now going to firm all these up. If I find any of the screws bottom out, I will swap them for shorter ones. And once it's all done, I will clean up all the goo with some white spirit, because this just dissolves with white spirit, um, which is mineral spirits if you're an American. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll show you the result once I'm done. There we go, window is done. Um, sometimes after a little while, you'll get a little bit more squeeze out around the window. So I'll come back in a couple of hours and just check for that and I can clean that up again with some white spirit if I need to. Um, but that is looking pretty good. So uh, once they're all done, I'll come on the boat with a big hose and just hose everything down and just check that nothing leaks, but that should be all good. I've had my assistant join me today and as you can see we have got all the windows in on the starboard side and they're all looking super. There's the one that I did to start with and I've done the same on the other side too. There we go running down the port side as well you can see all those windows are in as well. They are looking really super smart. There we go. I've just got to let the sealant cure off a little bit more and I'm going to come back in and give them another wipe with some white spirit just to clean up any kind of remaining sealant that oozes out because this soft sealant does tend to ooze out a little bit more over time particularly when it's warm like today and internally she is looking very smart as well with these new windows so that's the one above the galley it was a really really nice fit that one that's probably the best one of the lot um, sometimes it's quite difficult to get the gaps to meet up and look as neat as that is, particularly for the smaller ones up in the bow, but that looks superb. There's the other one on the port side and starboard side, saloon window, and of course the nav station window right there. So that's all the windows and all the hatches now replaced. Thank you very much for watching. That brings this episode to an end. I've not got much more to do on the inside for the windows. The only things I need to do are just up here, you might see there's a few little bits of gel coat um, where I did some filling, which I need to clean up and sand. And then um, that kind of part of the boat is completely finished. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget there is a link down in the description where you can buy me a beer. If you've learned something from me watching this video, then do feel free to buy me a beer. Anything that you donate to the Refit and Sale channel is really appreciated. It helps me fund the channel, helps me buy the equipment that I need to buy and use to create these videos. And the better equipment I have, the better videos I can make, the better content I can make for you. So thank you very much to those that have donated and uh, anything that is uh, donated to the channel is really, really Really appreciated. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.